Hi and welcome to another Green Tailor presentation. Today we'll be going through preparing your pay as you go summaries for in the payroll year and also just how to do the in the payroll. We'll be using MYV Account Right Plus version 19 today. Any versions prior to this version will be very similar so you won't find much change. We'll uh, firstly start by going through the pay as you go sum summaries. There's a, in MYB you go to the payroll tab and simply select print payment summaries. So to do this you must have finished your final payroll for the financial year and hopefully you've checked through the figures and made sure they look at, appear to be correct. Once we select this the first choice you'll have is the normally we're going to be preparing for employees so you'll in, do individual non-business ones. If there have been circumstances where you you have withheld 46 and a half cents on the dollar from any contractors. You would also be doing the business or personal service income certificates as well. But today we'll be focusing on the employee ones. Select that choice, that individual non-business, then we click the next key. This comes up with the details for the business that we're actually uh, going to be doing the pay-as-you-go summaries for. In our example today, we're actually using the clear water, water sample file. So these are already filled out, but if there's any blank ones you need to complete them with the appropriate business address and who the contact details, ABN, etc. are, which will then appear on the page you go summaries. Selecting the next key, we go to the next area. Now this area is where we actually match up the fields on the page you go summaries, so they've got the information with the appropriate income items. This is simply by a matter of choosing the appropriate classification for the page you go summary. So in First example, I'll use gross payments, and to the right here we have a list of different payroll items, and we simply say what we want to appear at this gross payments area. In the example here, we have advanced, back pay, base hourly, base salary. Another couple we should be adding are holiday leave loading, holiday pay, long service leave, overtime, sick pay, unused holiday pay, unused long service leave, and it, particularly if you've got people doing salary sacrifice, you may find that the salary sacrifice one. Now this depends also how you've set your payroll up. I'm assuming here you've entered the gross as their hourly and you'll be doing a salary sacrifice deduction from that. You may find there's other payroll items which you have in your list which aren't in this one here. That's particularly if you've been customising your payroll uh, items such as you may have overtime at two and a half times or just double time and a quarter and things like that. Going through the other common ones we often find are deductions down here at union fees and you need to make sure you've actually ticked the union fees. In this case they've also got an example here of professional associations. In our list here we don't have any but any other deductions that you've been deducting from people's payroll you would have them set up here. There's also a number of items there for allowances and lump sums and you would set them up accordingly. The final one you always make sure is total tax withheld and that should be defaulting already to the pay as you go withholding. If all of them are set up correctly you'll then click next. In here that's actually selected now the fact I've actually chosen those union fees it's actually pointed out when I push that next button I'll just click that again that the description needs to be entered. In this we'll actually type the comment here union fees And we'll click next again just to make sure it all goes through. All right, successful that time. The next area here is the superannuation. This is to do with reportable superannuation. Uh, this is for any superannuation where an employee has salary sacrificed or had input into their superannuation and where it's required to go on the page you go summary. You can link to the superannuation category if you've been using salary sacrifice. Alternatively, you can actually type the figures in. So if the figures weren't being calculated in here, you've been recording manually, you could type it in. For example, for Mary Jones, I'll put $1,000, and that will therefore put that on her pay-as-you-go summary. When you've selected them either by linking, an example I'll just show for linking, is you bring up the link, and it'll bring up all the different superannuations. And in this case, we'll go for the salary sacrifice item. Click OK, and you can see that's actually changed Mary Jones's 1900 and Peter Parker 1200. Selecting next, we go to the reportable fringe benefits area. 
generally this would be information provided by your accounting or your accountant uh, for when they've done the fringe benefits tax for the financial year which is also required to be reported on a page you go summary if you've got any of those figures you simply just type the amount in it's just warning me here that this figure must be entered as a gross up taxable value I'll just click OK to that click next here we'll give you now the opportunity to review the page you go summary you're prepared for the employee and it'll show the, just the tax file number there if you want you can click on their name it just shows the fields that are going to appear in a virtually pro form in the page you go summary clicking OK if you're happy with them you can actually now at this stage print the pay, payment summaries uh, or save them for a reference in the future in my case I'll just click next it's go, actually now at this stage you're actually going to prepare your electronic file ready to be sent to the ATO you can do a verification report and that just virtually shows you the information that's going to go at where on the page you go summaries again so if you check that and you're happy with that you just click next we now at this stage we create the employee duplicate file I normally suggest you would have a folder set up on the system for each financial year where you would keep your year in payroll backups and also this file for reference if you ever had to send it to the ATO again. In most cases in this example I'm just going to put in the, to the documents folder. Don't change the name on this, it's very important you leave the same name uh, as it's something the ATO will be looking for so you just simply click save. It also now uh, prompts you do you want to print the magnet magnetic media information form click yes to this and it will actually print out on your printer in this case an example I won't worry about printing it but you should certainly do that if for some reason your print job didn't work correctly you can also go to this print magnetic media form or if you click the wrong button in the last step if you've finalized all that simply click next it's asking you to do a backup for your financial for your, of your MYB for the year I would always do this and uh, if not at this stage you definitely do it before you do the payroll year end in this example just click finish now and we're back to the main screen you would now go into your computer pick up that employee duplicate file having noted where you did put it when you saved it put that onto a CD uh, you'll have to put an ID on that as well as a magnetic media form and then forward them to the ATO I hope this has been of help and useful uh, stay tuned we'll soon be doing a, another link session particularly for the payroll year end. Thank you.